This week on the Digital Coffee, LinkedIn profiles are getting a bit of a makeover. As you know, social media really works for e-commerce and now we can prove it. And what Facebook content types work best in the feed? All that and more after this. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Digital Coffee. This is your weekly dose of digital marketing and social media news for your business. My name is Amanda Webb. I am an ROI trainer, consultant, and mentor. What does that mean? That means that I help businesses just like yours get more return on investment, more profit, more money from the time, the energy, and the cash that you spend on your marketing. But enough about me. Why am I grabbing this mug of coffee? That is so, you know what? Sad story. Not only do I not have coffee in my mug today, I got up late, which in fairness was quite nice. So I haven't had a cup of tea even. I am caffeine-less. Anyway, great to see some of you here. I missed you last week, Deirdre. Great to see Deirdre. Good morning. Great to have you here. Lee, who is in Krakow. Amazing. Too much coffee. Well, you've obviously had the coffee that I am missing, so you're on the water. Great to see May King here. Great to see May King, the FOMO creator. Good morning. Um, you forgot to make your brew. We're both caffeineless, which is terrible. Now, speaking of making, at 10.30 a.m., if you want to come and join us over on LinkedIn, we do um, an after show called the Digital Coffee Extra Shot. And that is a, an audio chat. It's we are recording them, but you can't at the moment listen to the replays because we're working on that. So you actually have to join in live and we would love to hear your thoughts on the story of the week. So if you scan that QR code that is right there, you know that you can go straight through to the event. You can RSVP there and you can join it when you are ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oh, lots of people joining in this morning. Great, I'm always worried about my LinkedIn comments as you may have noticed because a lot of the times it doesn't seem to pass all the way through, but it's working. Great to see you, Hannah. Thanks for joining us. Okay, you're here for the news. So I'll stop waffling, I'll press a button and we'll move on to our first story. Hi, I'm Danielle from Redbow and you're watching The Digital Coffee with Amanda Webb. According to Adweek, Social media managers are reporting an up to 20% decline in the views of Reels on Instagram. Now, this is odd because really for the last two years, at least, Instagram have been pretty much forcing us to make Reels. It has been the only way that you could get decent reach. And that's been a pain, particularly for social media managers, because it's so much harder to come up with and design and create Reels content than it is just to put a static image up. Plus, you know, the audience didn't even like it that much. They were complaining that they weren't seeing as many images or photos as, as they used to, which is one of the things they loved about Instagram. Now, it's not really a surprise that we're seeing this decline because Adam Mossery did say, I'm trying to see when it was, in January in a Q&A on his Instagram stories that they knew that they had kind of gone in too much into Reels. So they were going to readjust the algorithm so that we would see more images in the feed. And that seems to have happened with this report that the, review, that the views of Reels are down. So I think for a lot of people, they'll be really happy that they don't just have to create Reels, that they can go back to that lovely content that they've always enjoyed creating and putting together on Instagram. Now, I'm not a big Instagram user, as most of you know, um, but even I am a little bit pleased because when I do post on Instagram, at least I can just put together an image and nothing else. I can see we've got some comments. I can see it's really pretty much Hannah and uh, making, fangirling over each other. Um, so great to see you here. And there's making popped into LinkedIn as well. So great. Instagram reels are dead. Well, no, they're not. I, yeah, I think they're far from dead. I think they are fire from dead. I just think they're not going to be that one thing that is going to bring you the reach anymore. I think we're still going to see them, but you're right, it is, it's gonna be nice to see more images in our feed again. Lee says, Reels, 
you're rather glad about them being being a photographer and just a photography business. Creating reels just didn't feel authentic enough and what did feel authentic, I didn't feel was interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was a big leap for a lot of people and I think all those people that have been putting it off will be really relieved now that they the focus is off them. Now that doesn't mean that reels won't work anymore. It just means you're not going to get those many thousands of views that would often happen when you posted a reel. And there is a whole like, um, thing in the system, the way I'm trying to think of the word for it, but I can't, you know, reels really were, are going out to people who aren't already connected with you. So there was a real advantage of reels for brand awareness, for bringing new people into your business. Whereas the feed, you get a good mixture, but mostly still the people that see it, the people you're connected to, and that, that presents a problem for growing your audience. And stories then, stories only get seen pretty much by people who follow you. So reels do have that little magical touch that the other areas don't, but with the, I could probably talk too long about this, but with the advent of um, keyword search, which is really the predominant way of searching on Instagram now, you don't need to worry about hashtags so much. I imagine more of your feed content, more images are going to start being discoverable by people who don't follow you. Okay, let's move on. I'm Ant McGinley and you're watching The Digital Coffee with Amanda Webb. You see people complaining all over the place, don't you, about LinkedIn. <laughs> They're like, LinkedIn is too much like Facebook. It's got all Facebooky. I don't like it. And you see it on comments on LinkedIn. You see it all over everywhere to people talking about it. And actually, you know what? I don't have a problem with it being more like Facebook because number one, I like knowing more about the people that I'm connected to that I may want to work with. I like knowing a little bit about my business associates. Wouldn't it be weird if you went to a networking meeting and you only said what your business did and you never said, well, I've got three cats or three children. Cats. Um, <laughs> wouldn't that be weird? So I kind of like that it has become more personal, that I'm getting to know people better. And also, you know, before that, LinkedIn was boring because all ever anyone talked about was you know their latest business achievements so the only comments you could ever leave were like congratulations so i do like that linkedin has got that so the reason we're talking about this is that linkedin are now going a bit facebooky in their ads they've actually started adding i'm looking to see if i can find the right shot for it I can't see it. They've started adding interest targeting. So that's, you know, was the foundation of Facebook ads, really. You could target people based on what they were interested in. They're adding 40 new different interests that you will be able to target people by. Because in the past, you've been able to, and I haven't done uh, LinkedIn ads in about a year, but in the past, you've only been able to target job title, um, industry, company, company size, that sort of thing, um, which is great because you know you're getting into the inboxes of the right people or you're getting into the, the feeds of the right people. But what if you have something that might skew to an interest, a specific kind of type of thing people are interested in? I think this could be good. Now, they're not like, you know, cats, that's not there, that's that's not what we've got coming up in this interest list. They are still business interests, but I do think it makes uh, the LinkedIn targeting a little bit more rich. And aside from that, you can also target people who have specific product interests or specific service interests. I'm looking forward to seeing how this works, but also I think none of this would be possible unless LinkedIn had become a bit more like Facebook, had become a little bit more fun and a lot more people posting interesting content. So I think it all turns around to maybe LinkedIn ads being a little bit more relevant for more businesses. Okay, I can see, oh, that's, making declaring Instagram reels are dead. Not yet, not yet. You missed the reels news. Well, Kate, you're gonna have to watch on replay because I ain't saying it again. Or you know what you could do? You could join myself and making at 10.30 a.m. over on LinkedIn, where we'll be discussing it in more detail. Reels are not dead, you don't need to worry. They're only slightly dead. They're getting old, that's what it is. You know, they're getting old, they need to have a little bit of a lie down, but they're definitely not dead. Hey, I'm Christine Gritman, and you are watching The Digital Coffee with social media superstar Amanda Webb. You are more likely to see a post 
from some page or person that you're unconnected with on Facebook than you are from a business page that you are connected to. And this is from Facebook's own report. In better news, if you post a link to your business page, that is more likely to get seen than if you post a link to any other type of account on Facebook. So if you post it to a profile, if you post it to a group, nope, but there is a higher percentage of people looking at links. So let's have a look at that link. This is the chart. They release this every year and actually, or every quarter, and actually in the last quarter it was the same. Business pages have, I think, 2.5% of the posts that are in the feed of an audience are links from Facebook pages. Whereas you can see the other accounts, really links don't work. So if you've got a Facebook group, keep putting the, oh, I've put too many things up there. Keep putting the, I don't even know what button to press now. Keep putting the link in the comments in a group, but if you've got a page, you can make it part of your post. It is more likely to be seen that way than if you post it otherwise on Facebook. Also, so this is a report that Facebook produce. It's their transparency report every quarter. And I just find that stuff interesting. Look, here's the I can't believe I'm, I'm making myself press another button. But here's the graph. Now that little orange sliver there, that's business pages. We are the smallest amount of content that appears in a Facebook feed. All the other sorts work really well. And this report comes out quarterly and it's based on the United States. It's based on feeds on the United States. It's conducted by Facebook themselves. And they also list the top 20 posts by impressions, so that's the number of times they've been seen, that in the last quarter. And what's really interesting about this is seven, seven of those posts were little short videos. In the last quarter, it was much higher than that. The other sort of posts that seem to be doing well are multi-image posts, so either like an album that has mo multiple photographs in, or maybe if you've created a graphic that has two or three images in kind of a meme-like graphic, they seem to be working really well. Quotes, humorous quotes. So everything is a little bit light-hearted that's fit, fitting into the feed now. Humorous quotes, but not the sort that you might create on Canva. Things are actually kind of on found objects. So for example, there's a towel with kind of a, a quote about mums or something on it, you know, and they're not inspirational quotes. They're usually quite funny. A lot of those will be have created in a graphic design program, but they look like they've been taken in the wild. So a lot more kind of like photographs of stuff. So Lee, you'll like that rather than something that you've had to go and create in Canva. One post that did really well, it's one of my favorite types of posts, and I know it's one of Kate's favorite types of posts, and it's also Mike Stelzner from Social Media Examiner has pointed this out as a powerful type of post. What is it? It's text on a colored background. You know, they give you those, those backgrounds that you can write your updates on. They're quite ugly. They have emojis on with a question that asks the question. So this was just one particular one of those with a question ha had gone pretty viral. So that's really interesting when you're putting together your content plan for Facebook in the future. Remember that you can post links if you're posting to a business page. That works still. It also that uh, short videos are still working, although as we know, you know, they won't be quite so prominent into the future. Um, multiple images work really well and do try those texts on the colored backgrounds. They still seem to have quite a lot of appeal. Who's next? Oh, Lee, you're about to see yourself. Hi, I'm Lee from Wellshot and you're watching the Digital Coffee with Amanda Webb. Cheers. According to The Economist, 50% of people have bought from a brand that they recently discovered on social media. Yay. According to McKinsey, six out of 10 Americans under 25 have actually completed the whole purchase on social media. So that would be something that's not available yet in Ireland, I don't think it's available in the UK, that would be using something like Instagram shops or Facebook shops where the whole checkout process can happen on a social network. Now, I know you already knew that social media is great for e-commerce, it's great for selling, but what this really proves is it's really good for 
bottom of the funnel, getting those first customers. So the brand was discovered recently and then they bought from it. So actually middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, it's not right at the bottom. It's good for both of those stages, the buying cycle. It's even great for brand awareness. This is where people are discovering your store. They may not buy straight away, but this is where they first heard of you so it's a really good place to get new customers. And then of course, once you've got new customers, you can encourage repeat custom after that. I think this is really good news. <laughs> I can see there, look, Hannah says, TikTok made me buy it. Well, it probably did, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, oh. I feel, oh, I was wondering what Lee's one was. She saw herself and she feels she needs to update the video. I still think it's a great video. I will hopefully be shooting a whole lot more videos at Social Media Marketing World. We may have a bit of fun with them. So we may have new videos coming soon. But talking of Social Media Marketing World, this is where this video was shot. Hi, I'm Charlie Lawrence and you're watching The Digital Coffee with Amanda Webb. Now, the problem with Be Real is that it does one thing. Be Real is that social network, you know, it's popular with the young people. I do have an account, I use it for a little while. I realized my life was boring and I stopped using it. But basically what that does is the social network sends you a prompt once a day. And when you get that, everyone picks up their phone, takes a photo of what they're doing now. It's two cameras, so it takes you and what you're looking at at the same time. But it just does that. And the problem with that means that it's really easy to copy if you're another social network. I mean. It didn't take long for Instagram to copy TikTok. No, and if they can copy something that's as complex as that, obviously something that's as simple as Be Real is really easy to copy. And we know this has already happened. TikTok already stole Be Real. There is now a TikTok now, I think it's called, which is built into TikTok, which is basically Be Real. And now Messenger may be getting in on the game. This was spotted by Matt Navarra, the, uh, I don't know what you call him, a social media geek investigator. Um, apparently it's not even um, in public testing now. It's just something that they're working on. It's called Roll Call. And it will happen within Messenger groups on Facebook. And the big difference is it isn't that Messenger will send you a notification once a day for you to put your picture up. It's that somebody in the group will start a prompt and that prompt might be something like show us your breakfast or post now or whatever it happens to be. So it's not set by the network, it's set by the user. And they put up the prompt and you get a timer of five minutes and then everyone in the chat has to post their picture or their video within that time frame. And you won't be able to see the other submissions until you have posted your own. This could, right, one, this could be totally abused and get totally boring. I mean, how many times a day am I getting the everyone tag now? Please don't use the everyone tag unless it's emergency, you know. Anyway, <laughs> let's just talk about, let's not talk about that. So if it's abused and you get too many of these, it will become boring. But it could be a really good way for a business because now your groups are, can be, attached to your chat groups. It could be a really excellent way for a business to re-engage their audience, to really get to know their audience, or even to run a competition. I think there are so many marketing opportunities here. I think it's going to be absolutely fab. I can see I'm kind of going, looking at my camera, looking at my comments, because I can see making says, yeah, last week myself and making were talking, or two weeks ago, will we use it? She's installed it, too scared to use it. <laughs> yes, well, the nice thing is making that only the people who are connected to you will see it. And if, if it's just you and me, we should follow each other. That's, we're only looking at it. Like, honestly, you need to know people under 25. That's why I have no connections on my reel. I've got like three three connections. We, we'll, we'll, we'll stop talking about my lack of connections on Be Real at some stage. I'm wondering what button to press now. Oh, it's this one. Hello, this is Rob Charles, the voice of Mike on Forever FM on Peter Kay's Car Share. BAFTA award winning, I've got to say, but I've not seen the BAFTA yet. Anyway, you're watching The Digital Coffee with Amanda Webb. Enjoy. I'm on tea. Shh. 
LinkedIn is sprucing up your profile. Yes, it is. Again, although this is really cool because you know that activity section. If you go to someone's profile, you can go into their activity section. You can see what they posted recently. You can see the posts that they've engaged with recently. But it's kind of ugly. It's kind of ugly. You just get like a little thumbnail image and then you text. It's like, it's not pretty. And they're about to make it pretty because now it's rolling out over the next two weeks to all, a few weeks, not two, few weeks to all users. So hopefully we're all going to have it soon. And you'll be able to go into this activity section and you will be able to select the type of content that you want to appear here. People will still be able to see everything, but you want to, the ones that you want to showcase, the type of content. So you'll be able to cho choose from images, videos, um, posts, and interestingly, comments, which is, I think this is really interesting and really valuable because one, if you don't create a lot of content for LinkedIn, but you do a lot of good, valuable commenting, you may want to highlight those comments because it will showcase your expertise and your care or, or whatever else it goes into there. Also, of course, that's going to encourage more people to comment and more engagement to go on LinkedIn, which will help build the network. Rolling out to everyone, I'm imagining most people would choose images or photos. There's also, you can articles. So if you've written a lot of articles, you can make that featured there too. This is what it's gonna look like. I should probably press the buttons. There you go. Pretty hot. It's gonna look so much better than it used to. Um, so much more visually interesting. I am honestly, like LinkedIn have made a lot of updates recently and I have been just so impressed. One more button. You're watching the digital copy with Amanda Webb. This one could be so much fun. Instagram are rolling out a new feature that is called green screen reactions. We don't know a lot about it yet, but the name suggests that it's green screen, right? I'm pointing behind me as if it's up, it's up in the sky above me. So you won't need a green screen. It's just gonna cut you out from your background and then stick you onto the story that you want to react to. So you can still see the story and you'll be there, blah, 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 blah. That's cool. I think this could be really good fun. I think it could be used to add your commentary. It could be used if you're a business to say thank you to a customer or if you were sharing maybe something that a creator you've been working with had done to actually, you know, say thank you or to add your own commentary to that or your own little twist to that as well. I think that could be cool. Also, I like, oh, this is for stories. I'm wondering if we could add it to reels, it would be absolutely amazing because you know, reaction videos are huge, both on YouTube and on other video platforms, people watching something and reacting to it and talking through it, that is huge. So I think it could be a lot of fun. Of course, it could be abused, people could be nasty, but people are nasty on social media. I think at some stage we just need to recognize that. I'm a big fan of this. I think it could be great fun. I feel like I've run out of news and I feel like it's early, so I do want to tell you about this. If you um, uh, haven't switched to Google Analytics 4 yet, or if you have switched to Google Analytics 4, you got there and you went, this just looks utterly confusing. I have created a phrase book because one of the problems with Google Analytics 4 is that the language is so different that when you go there, they have these things like default channel grouping which is brand new and they don't really explain what it means. It looks like medium, is it medium? So I've created this phrase book to help you get through those early stages in Google Analytics 4. This QR code is where you can download it. And while I'm talking QR codes, you won't forget, will you? At 10.30 a.m. myself and May King Zhang will be on Twitter. No, we won't be on Twitter. No, we'll be on LinkedIn chatting through these stories again. Um, you are welcome to join us. You can just listen in or you can join the conversation. Have I given you enough QR codes yet? If you can't make that, that is all from me this week. I will be back. I'm looking for buttons. I will be back. Same bat time, same bat place next week. Until then, bye-bye.